Hey guys, Alex Sutherland here. You may know me as ASUD from Card Runners. I am also the creator of GTO Range Builder. And today I am making a video for you guys on GTO Flop Play and specifically analyzing uh, both the theory and practice of C-Bet defense. So we're going to be looking at, you know, defending against continuation bets out of position on the flop. I'll be going through some theory like, uh, you know, some one minus alpha ideas, minimum defense range ideas, as well as some of the more complicated models from the mathematics of poker. And the goal is to try and true up those results with, you know, practical real world GTO range builder flop solutions that will tell us, you know, what GTO play in these scenarios really looks like. And my goal is that at the end of this video, you guys will understand the existing theory, understand its limitations, understand when it applies, when it doesn't, and also have a good grasp on why GTO Range Builder you know, disagrees with the existing theory in the place it does, how much EV you stand to gain by you know, learning the insights that GTO Range Builder can give you that existing theory kind of lacks, all that good stuff. Now, this is part of a new package I'm releasing here. The idea is that it's a GTO strategy pack, which contains a pack of fully browsable, pre-computed GTO Range Builder flop solutions. You guys have full access to the solutions. You can you know, dig in, really look at what happens on every possible turn card, every possible river card, You know how you should be following up with three barrels, how you should be following up with two barrels. Uh, I'm going to be focusing this video more on the uh, direct flop play, c-betting and c-bet defense, but you guys will have the solutions. You can dig in as deep as you want. Now, these solutions are pre-computed and chosen by me to ex specifically explore an important strategy topic, in, the in this case, c-bet defense. And with the solutions, you get this video. You get expert video analysis, me explaining what parts of the solution I think are important, what parts I don't think are as important, you know, how you can really take the solutions, learn from them, and apply the results to directly win more money at the tables. And in addition to all that, there is a discussion thread at the bottom. I'm hoping that we can generate some healthy discussion on this topic. And to encourage that, uh, for the next week or two, if any of you guys have ideas on an additional scenario that we could run that would you know, maybe test some of the recommendations I make in this video or explore some new interesting topic related to CBET defense, let me know, post in the comments, we can discuss it a bit, and I will take the best idea and run a calculation based on that and add it to this pack for everyone to enjoy for free. So let's get into it. Defending out of position versus C-bets. So one of the questions people have been asking for a long time is just how often can we fold to C-bets? And my goal in this series is to First, take a look at the existing theory out there uh, that are attempts to answer this question. Then we're going to take a look at numerical GTO range builder solutions that show us you know, exact answers in specific spots. And then we're going to try and understand what is it that's different about the real world GTORB solutions from the you know, theoretical abstractions, the simplifications. Why do we get slightly different results? How can we leverage that knowledge and those differences to play better at the tables and to win more money? And to start understanding that, I'm going to go through some of the existing thinking <coughs> on uh, CBET defense. Um, starting maybe five or seven years ago, there was kind of conventional wisdom that playing marginal hand out of position in the turn and river is a losing proposition. And I'd say at that time, basically everyone folded way too much to CBETs and CBET way too much uh, in conjunction. And this conventional wisdom is not wrong. Playing, playing these marginal hands out of position on the turn and river is difficult, and you do need to account for your positional disadvantage when making calls. But people just took this advice way too far. And, uh, you know, I remember when I was coming up through the ranks playing NL200, I got a little coaching because I was having trouble transitioning uh, up from NL100. And my coach basically just had me start C betting like 85% or something, and it just worked because everyone was just folding too much. Even the regulars at that time didn't have a good understanding of, you know, that you do need to put up some resistance on the flop to C bets or you're being super exploitable. So this gave rise to a more recent phenomenon, which is what I'm going to call pseudo game theory. And I think the mathematics of poker really started this since then there's been a lot of books that expanded on it. And the concept that emerged, uh, one of the most popular ones is kind of this non auto profit or minimum defense ranges or one minus alpha approach. And this came from taking the clairvoyance game from the Mathematics of Poker, which is 
a simplified model where you assume one player has a purely polarized range, the other player has a purely bluff catcher range, and you s figure out, based on the game theoretic concept of indifference, how much the bluff catching player needs to call to make his opponent indifferent, have the same EV, whether he bets his bluffs or checks them and gives up with them. And that model is really nice and it will give you an exact frequency with which in that model you need to call as a bluff catcher. So if it's a two-thirds spot bet, you need to call exactly 60%. And furthermore, that model generalizes nicely across multiple streets. Uh, the Mathematics of Poker goes through that in chapter 19, I think. However, that model has a few key assumptions that don't really work in the real world. One of the most important ones is about the ranges. It assumes that once you give up with a bluff, there's no turn card that could ever come that would make it better. So they kind of have this very low EV for checking back marginal hands that in the real world is not the case. You know, If you take plenty of the hands that you currently are c-betting and consider checking them back, even the weaker end of your c-betting range, many of those hands would have substantial EV after checking them back on the turn. <clears throat> um, the other thing that it assumes is that when your bet is called, uh, when, when your bluff is called, that there's no good turn cards for you after you get called. And then furthermore, they make this very strong assumption about the differences in range composition. One player has this polarized range, one player has this merge range. So there's all sorts of assumptions that go into this. And without something computational like Teacher Range Builder, you can't actually just go in and say, okay, this model makes predictions. I was supposed to call 60% to a third, two thirds pot bet. What does G2 play actually look like? How close is the model? So that's one of the things we're gonna look at in this video. Um, Another model we'll look at that falls in the pseudo game theory approach is the 0 1 model from the Mathematics of Poker, which gives a much uh, lower call frequency that relaxes the assumption it has symmetric ranges where both players have hands of strength ranging between 0 and 1. And what we'll see there is that to a third, two thirds pot bet, you only call 53.5% uh, of the time, so substantially less than 60%. So we'll get to take a look at which of those models is better, why, which one closer, more closely matches reality. Then finally, I think people have always been curious about some out-of-the-box options. Uh, one of the biggest ones is, you know, maybe you should be donk betting. Maybe GTO play is very complicated, but it has you figuring out a balanced donking range and a balanced checking range and using both. And GTO range builder will let us take a look at that as well. And the goal of this strategy pack is to give definitive answers to these questions. GTO range builder is going to let us take a look at specific real world situations, compare the solution to some of these theory predictions, some of these model predictions, we'll see that you know doing a one minus alpha defense on kind of standard boards is actually gonna be a huge mistake, cost us a lot of EV. And we're gonna look at why that is, how we can adapt the theory to better match you know what we see is actually GTO, how we can understand the GTORB solutions and apply them to our games, and how we can pull all this information together to win more money.